people who could be characters in fiction books, but they existed in real life. Real life can be way more fascinating than any fiction story. There's a person who learned to play football even though he had a third leg. A man who had 24 personalities and more. The names of these and other remarkable people we're going to talk about today deserve to be synonyms for extraordinary. Their life journeys continue to amaze people to this day, and they were all as real as you and me. Do you want to discover more marvelous real-life stories like these? Then keep watching. But before we dive into the storytelling, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the little notification bell. Now you'll always be on time for all the Brightside Hangouts. Number 7. Petrus Gonsalves, The Man of the Woods Everyone knows and loves the tale about the Beauty and the Beast who fell in love with each other. But it seems that this beautiful fairy tale was partially inspired by a real story. It all began in 1537 in Tenerife with the birth of Petrus Gonsalves. He was an unusual baby. His entire body was covered with hair. Back then, people had no idea that it was simply a case of hypertrichosis, a condition in which an abnormal amount of hair grows over the body. Unfortunately, his parents were convinced that their child had a demonic disease. When Petrus turned 10, they sold him to French pirates. The pirates named him the Man of the Woods and presented Petrus to Henry II, King of France. Henry II noticed that the unusual boy was quite smart and that he was learning French pretty quickly, so he made sure that little Petrus received a good education. After Henry II died, his wife, Catherine de Medici, took care of Petrus. According to some sources, she even initiated his wedding. Petrus married a beautiful woman called Lady Catherine. Despite having different upbringings, Petrus and Catherine had a strong marriage. They had seven children, four of which inherited their father's features. The most famous descendants of Petrus and Catherine were their daughters Magdalena and Antoinette. However, after the death of Catherine de' Medici, the Gonsalves family fell out of favor with the French royal household. They moved to Italy to live under the protection of Margaret of Parma. After some time, the family moved again, this time to Viterbo, where Petrus died at the age of 81. It was Petrus' story that made scientists study hypertrichosis. Despite the fact that Petrus was a nobleman, he and most of the children still weren't considered fully human in the eyes of the public. But his exceptional life story will certainly be remembered by generations to come. Number 6. Francesco Lentini, the three-legged football player Francesco Lentini was born in Italy in 1889. He should have had a twin brother, but, unfortunately, something went wrong during his mother's pregnancy, and his twin's body fused to Francesco's spinal cord. As a result, he was born with three legs. Francesco's parents had 11 other children, and they refused to raise their special boy. They gave him to his aunt, and she later sent him to an orphanage for disabled children. According to Francesco, before being sent to the orphanage, he thought he was the unhappiest child in the world. But upon seeing children who couldn't hear or speak or were mentally incapacitated, his outlook changed completely. He realized that his problem was not the end of the world since he could still enjoy the beauty all around him. That's when he decided to learn how to use his body. He learned to ride a bike and play football, and he was so amazing at all of this that at the age of eight, he went to the US and became a circus performer. The shows of The Three-Legged Man were extremely popular, and Francesco decided to use this platform to help people deal with their problems. He wrote his autobiography and started to sell it at his shows. In the book, he explained how he learned to live with his problem and make the best of it by becoming a performer. Francesco also tried to figure out the core of his problem, sharing his findings with women and telling them what they shouldn't do during pregnancy. At the age of 30, Francesco became a U.S. citizen and married Teresa Murray. They had a very happy marriage and raised four healthy children. Francesco continued doing shows for his entire life and died at the age of 77, proving to all of us that we can do whatever we put our minds to. Number 5. Christian Heinrich Heineken, the incredibly smart child. Christian Heinrich Heineken, who is still called a child prodigy, was born in 1721 in Lübeck, Germany. His father, Paul Heineken, was an artist and architect, 
and his mother, Katharina Heineken, was an artist and alchemist. His exceptional abilities were obvious from a very young age. At just 10 months old, Christian could already speak, repeating the names of objects and sometimes even fully formed sentences. He had a phenomenal memory and, according to witnesses, could even quote the New Testament in Latin at the age of one. When he was three, he gave a detailed and interesting lecture about Danish history in the times of Frederick IV, shocking courtiers with his knowledge. Unfortunately, this little genius suffered from celiac disease, which is basically a gluten intolerance. It wasn't studied enough back then, and Christian's parents unknowingly fed him cereal. This led to him dying at the age of four. Number four, Martin and Anna Bates, the giant couple. Anna Haining Swan was born in 1846 in Canada. She was born into a regular family. Her parents, brothers, and sisters were all of average height. But Anna was different. At the age of 15, she was already six feet, eight inches tall and weighed around 220 pounds. When she was 25, she fell in love with a circus performer named Martin Bates. His story was kind of similar to Anna's. He grew up in a family of average height, but he started growing rapidly at the age of six. He reached six foot eight inches by the time he turned 14. When Martin and Anna met, he was seven feet six inches tall. And according to witnesses, Anna was even taller, even though she was nine years younger than Martin. The couple quickly fell in love and got married. They tried to have children twice. Sadly, their daughter weighed 18 pounds and died soon after birth. Their son weighed more than 22 pounds and lived for just 11 hours. In 1888, Anna had a heart attack and died. In 1897, Martin married a woman of average height named Annette Lavon Weatherby. He died of nephritis 22 years later. Both Anna and Martin were creative people, and everyone remembered them not because of their height, but because of their talent for acting and music. Number 3. William Stanley Milligan, the man with 24 personalities. A lot of people are familiar with William Milligan's story from the books and movies about his life. He was born in 1955 in Florida and had a rare psychological disorder, which made him have 24 full-fledged personalities who were not responsible for each other's actions. William himself could only control his personality, Billy, but not the others. Among Billy's personalities were some really strong ones that knew about the others and could even control and weaken them. Some of the personalities helped William deal with certain tasks and problems. Others had destructive goals. There were men and women, adults and children, and people of different intelligence levels with different accents and characteristics. And not all of them were friendly. Two of William's personalities committed several crimes, including robbery and kidnapping, resulting in Billy being taken to court. The judge, after listening to the opinions of experts, didn't sentence Billy to jail. Instead, he was sent for psychiatric treatment. Billy spent 10 years in a psychiatric clinic. At the end of his stay, he was given a clean bill of mental health by his psychotherapists. After he was released, Billy created a small movie production company, but it went bankrupt without releasing a single movie. Soon after that, Billy stopped communicating with everyone he knew and moved away. He died in a nursing home when he was 59 years old. Number two, Ella Harper, the camel girl. Ella Harper was born in 1870 in Tennessee. She was incredibly gorgeous, but unfortunately, the first thing people saw was not her pretty face, but the strange disease she had. Ella was born with recurved knees that bent in the opposite direction to normal knees. The only way she could get around was on all fours. When she was 12, she joined the Harris Nickel Plate Circus program, where she was nicknamed the Camel Girl. In all the advertisements, she was described as a beautiful woman who walked like a camel. At that time, Ella made $200 a week, which is about $5,000 now. At the age of 16, Ella decided to leave the show and go to school. She got married at the age of 35 and quickly became pregnant. However, her precious daughter died before the age of one for unknown reasons. When Ella was 48, she and her husband adopted a newborn girl, but she also died when she was just three months old. 
Three years after that, Ella died of colon cancer. She was buried in Spring Hill Cemetery next to her children. Number 1. June and Jennifer Gibbons, the silent twins. June and Jennifer Gibbons were born in 1963 in Barbados. From their very first days, the girls were quiet and didn't communicate with anyone. After moving to Wales, the girls' parents realized that they weren't actually mute. They were communicating, but only with each other, and they used a special language only they could understand. June and Jennifer's parents tried to separate the girls, going as far as to send them to different schools to make them communicate with other people. But it only made the situation worse. When June and Jennifer returned home, they started to protect themselves from the outside world even more. For Christmas 1979, they were each given a diary as a gift, and they began to write a lot. They created creepy stories about young men and women who exhibited strange and often criminal behavior. After some time, they began committing crimes themselves, including arson and assault. A judge decided to send June and Jennifer to a hospital for psychiatric treatment. The girls were separated, but the staff were spooked because they still managed to behave in a completely identical way, staying in identical poses in their cells at the same time. A journalist named Marjorie Williams fought for the girls for 11 years. In the end, she finally helped to transfer the twins to a regular hospital. Before moving, Jennifer told Marjorie that she, Jennifer, was going to have to die because June and I decided so. According to Marjorie, the twins had an agreement that one of them would have to die to allow the other twin to start to speak and live a normal life. The twins had agreed that this was a necessary step, and Jennifer made the choice to sacrifice her own life. She died at the age of 29. As it turned out, June and Jennifer had a difficult and complicated relationship, and expressed their love and hate for one another in their diaries. Jennifer wrote that her sister was a dark shadow robbing her of sunlight, and kept wondering whether she could get rid of her own shadow, gain life, and be free. After her sister's death, June started communicating with her relatives and even worked at a charity store for a short time. She is still alive and lives a quiet and independent life near her parents. Do you know of any other exceptional people we forgot to mention? Out of all these people, who would you like to meet the most? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a like and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life.